During World War I, Serbia loses two-thirds of the male population. The women stay back to start a new life the best they can, but this also means there are many small towns with few or no men at all. Sisters Ognjanka and Boginja live in Pokrb, which only has one old man left, and as kids, they like to play around the pond next to the cemetery. Nowadays Boginja likes to bathe in that pond, but Ogjenka doesn't approve because legend says the pond is cursed. Their great-grandmother cried out that pound when her husband didn't come home from war, and the tears made it so salty that even starfish can live in it. After crying for seven days and seven nights, the great-grandmother thought it was enough and swore from that day on her heart would be tough like stone. Since crying was all she knew to do, she became the best whaler on the mountain. Whalers are women hired to cry at funerals, and from generation to generation, this became the family business, meaning the sisters are whalers too. In this village, if a boy is as tall as a rifle, he's ready for war. As more wars happened and years passed, no men left back equals no customers, so whalers' tears are slowly becoming worthless. Only two men ever came back to Pokerp, and they also died quickly. The first was crushed by a gravestone, if by accident or because his wife killed him for cheating, nobody knows. The second man knew he couldn't defend a whole village of women by himself and set up a minefield in the vineyard. He never marked down the position of the mines though, because he was afraid the enemy could get their hands on that information and trusted his photographic memory. In the end, his memory failed him and the man died from stepping on his own mines. The minefield he left behind became a problem because the vineyard is the village's main source of income. The remaining women renamed the vineyard into Minyard and since then, they draw straws to see who will be the next person to pick up the grapes since most of the time, such chore ends up in tragedy. One morning, the sisters are approached by Nada, who wants to hire their crying services in advance because she's drawn the short straw and is going to the Minyard next. Because she has to pay in advance though, she asks the sisters to give her a demonstration of their whaling performance. Since their client is still alive, Ognjanka has trouble acting well, thus she tries to think of sad things to make herself cry. She remembers the day their friend Sonia got married, but she didn't even get to kiss her husband before he was dragged away to war and since then she's been mute. This still doesn't help her cry though, so Boginia tries to help by reminding her that she'll be 22 next autumn and yet she's never found love, in fact considering the lack of men she probably never will. Ognjenka reminds her sister the same will happen to her, and this gets the sisters crying properly. Hearing about the sad state of their lives, Nada decides to kiss Boginia, explaining that unlike the sisters, she did kiss a man once. This man turns out to be Grandpa Bisa, the only guy left in the village. The sisters find this disgusting, but Nada explains she'd rather have an old guy than die without having her first time. Grandpa Bisa is incredibly old and can barely move, nobody even thought of him as a man until all the others died and the women became desperate. He's growing sicker by the day, but at his old age, there isn't much the villages which can do to keep him with them for longer. Later in the evening, Nada and the sisters go to the local bar where women get together to drink and drown their sorrows, which is harder than it looks because Rashia's band only plays funeral songs, even if they're in a slightly faster tempo. Because Nada is sure she doesn't have much time left, she asks the bartender to drop the cheap drinks and serve spider brandy instead, that way she can go out with a bang. The bartender grants the request and soon every woman in the bar is having hallucinations of the dead men in their lives. Boginia fights with Rashia over a handsome smoking man that unlike the others looks alive, while Ogjenka cries because not even an illusion will have her before she also gets to see a healthy man as she passes out. In the morning, Sonia enters the minyard and before dying in an explosion, she tells the sisters that she's paid for them to have some fun time with Grandpa Bisa. Sometime later, the sisters go to Bisa's hut, but neither of them wants to go first. Boginia pushes Ogjenka onto the bed, but as soon as Bisa touches her, Ogjenka freaks out and yells, which kills Bisa with a heart attack. For having killed the only man left in the village, the sisters are tied to a stake to be burned. Desperate to get out of this one, Boginia tells everyone she could bring back another better man to make up for Bisa, so the villagers decide to give them a chance. The sisters have three days to come back with a man or the witch will make the soul of their great-grandmother rot in a place worse than hell. The siblings ride out of town in search of a man, but it's harder than it looks. The first one they encounter belongs to another female-only town, and those women scare the sisters away as soon as they see them come closer to their guy. The second man they find is actually a woman pretending to be a guy in order to join the army so men can stay back and help repopulate. Eventually the sisters make it to the city, where they're shocked to see that the men from their hallucinations are there. Ognjenka's guy is Dragaloop, a circus performer known as the Man of Steel whose main act is launching himself from a cannon. On the other hand, Boginia's man is Arsa, a smooth Charleston singer. Ognjenka and Dragaloop get a crush as soon as they look each other in the eye, and Dragaloop invites her to fly with him. Usually this is something he sells to any woman willing to pay but all the girls that are at first screaming for his attention soon move to Arsa when they hear him sing. The path opens for Ognjenka to join Dragalub in the cannon, and they fly away together until they fall into a nearby lake. Dragalub almost drowns, but Ognjenka drags him out of the water and gives him mouth to mouth. Once Dragalub is better, he comments on how impressed he is by Ognjenka and asks her to be his assistant. 
Meanwhile, Arsa finds himself surrounded by too many women, so to get them off his back, he throws a flower and promises that whoever catches it will be his queen. The women rush to grab the flower that has fallen in the lake as they push each other in the way, and Boginia gets to grab it first, hiding it in her mouth to avoid anyone stealing it from her. However this is only a trick to give Arsa time to return to his car in order to escape, although he does stop to pick up his friend Dragalug first, who brings Ogjenka with him. The crazy fangirls try to stop the car from leaving and Boginia jumps against the door to show she has the flower, between that and Ogjenka saying that's her sister, Arsa has no choice but to allow Boginia in the car as well. As the four of them travel together, it's clear that Ogjenka and Dragalub are really into each other, but Arsa doesn't appreciate Boginia's advances. After a few miles, the girls ask for the car to stop so they can change out of their wet dresses, and seeing them wearing new salacious clothing makes Arsa more receptive to their charms. Ogjenka and Dragalub get in their car but the mood is ruined by Ogjenka's hair getting stuck in the door. She tries to convince Dragalub not to take them back to Pokerp, but Dragalub refuses because he's eager to see a town full of women desperate for a guy. Meanwhile Arsa and Boginia make out against some rocks, and Boginia convinces him of ditching Dragalub and escape to Belgrade the capital to find fame together. The group gets back on the road and almost run over a funeral procession. As the people begin complaining about the interruption, Boginia drags Arsa with him to steal the hearse in order to escape, this means they accidentally steal the body of the deceased as well. On their way to Belgrade, the couple leaves the car on automatic, causing the body to fall off the vehicle before they get busy in the back seat. When they finally make it to the city, they celebrate by dancing in the middle of it. In the meantime, Ogjenka and Dragalub continue to make their way to Pokerp, but at least Ogjenka convinces Dragalub to tell her some stories about Belgrade. The city life is glamorous, and they're about to open a tower called Palace Albania which will be so tall that it'll touch the clouds. Dragalub hopes someday he can do his show on top of it, perhaps jumping from the roof, although Ogjenka thinks that's too dangerous. Ogjenka begins thinking about trying to convince Dragalub to go to Belgrade again, but she's overwhelmed by guilt for not keeping up her promise to her people and the memory of her great-grandmother so they stick to their plan to go to Pokerp. Speaking of Pokerp, the women are drawing straws again and this time Sonya is the loser, but their chore is interrupted by the arrival of Ogjenka and Dragalub. The women at first think he's another illusion, but as soon as they realize the man is real, they're all over him except for a very wary Sonya. Dragalub loves the attention, but Ogjenka can't help getting jealous. Later, they take advantage of Dragalub's circus training to collect the grapes safely. Dragalub rides a bicycle on some ropes across the minyard while Ogjenka is tied to him picking up the fruit without having to touch the ground. In the evening, everyone celebrates by making wine the traditional way, which is by stomping all over the grapes in a big bucket, and Dragalub is happy to join the party while Sonya watches him from afar. Meanwhile, the witch keeps her promise and allows the soul of the sister's great-grandmother to rest in peace, which puts Ogjenka's mind at ease. Now that the guilt is gone, she begins feeling rather lonely and frustrated because everyone got what they wanted except for her, but her thoughts are suddenly interrupted by Boginia, who has come back to help. After telling a sleepy Arsa not to leave the car, the sisters go to the bar to get Dragalub back. They find him having fun and Sonya getting closer to kiss him, so a jealous Ogjenka hits Dragalub in the groin before announcing to everyone that he's hers and that they're taking him back to Belgrade. However the women laugh at the sisters and continue to celebrate without letting them go. Ogjenka tries to convince Dragalub they need to go while everyone's drunk and, after declaring her love for him, she kisses him. Seeing this makes Sonya speak again, requesting the kiss that she has been waiting for since her wedding day was ruined. Dragalub tries to explain he can only kiss Ogjenka, but Sonya ignores him and kisses him anyway. At that moment, Arsa shows up at the bar, and now it's Boginia's turn to get jealous as all the women go after him. Dragalub gets annoyed too because the attention isn't only on him anymore. Arsa wastes no time in having some spider brandy before asking the band to play something in order for him to dance with Boginia on top of the table. However Rashia tries to cut in and dance with Arsa as well, which begins a fight between her and Boginia. Their feet start to bleed when they step on the glasses on the table, and Dragalub gets so tired of this dumb display that he turns the table over to make it stop. Another argument starts, this time between the two men, and while trying to show off his muscles, Dragalub ends up falling on the floor. The women remind them that the only way to prove who is the better man is through their bed skills, and when Dragalub accepts, Ogjenka throws a glass at his head. Boginia is very angry to see how the women take away the men to be used, but she feels she can't do much about it. Ogjenka however cuts to the front of the line to take the first turn with Arsa. She's tense and reluctant, showing how scared she is of this and the fact she's only doing it because she feels she has too, so Arsa is a gentleman and refuses to touch her. After Ogjenka leaves, Rashi comes to have her turn too, but Arsa turns her down as well and leaves the room. Meanwhile, the witch and the town elder argue over how to proceed while Dragalub sleeps. In the morning, while Boginia is taking the glass shards off her feet by the pond, Ogjenka finds her and tells her how respectful Arsa had been. Back in town, Dragalub wakes up to find Sonya hovering above him, telling him she knows he isn't really a pig and he just likes to play macho because of his pride. 
Dragalube is the kind of man that sticks to one woman and Sonya knows she isn't the chosen one, but she still takes another kiss to make up for her unfair destiny before sending him after his real love. As the sisters leave for Belgrade in the car, Dragalube tries to join them, but they just hit him with the vehicle for being a pig. Arsa leaves his room too and notices all the women waiting for him, but by trying to escape from them, he accidentally enters the minyard. Boginia stops the car when she sees what's going on and tells Ogdjenka not to cry and to go to Belgrade before she enters the minyard as well. Arsa and Boginia begin kissing and dancing as minds explode around them, and eventually, the couple is killed by the fire. Ogdjenka leaves for Belgrade while she remembers how she told her sister not to bathe in the pond because of its curse. When she makes it to the city, Ogdjenka finds Dragalub on top of the now open Palace Albana, and she joins the party on the roof to see if he can pull the jump off. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.